We will be discussing today, and I believe uh, there's so many new brethren who have not yet uh, heard this preaching about the keys to covenant of grace. The keys to the covenant of grace. When we say when we say key, okay, this is the access. This is the uh, what do you call this? This will be the instrument to open our understanding, to open our mind about God's ordained words, what God has planned us to, what God has planned for us all to understand. And I believe that when you are reading the Bible, you will see that there are many covenants. You can. I, I, I believe that you've heard the old covenant, you have heard the new covenant, and many people are saying now that we are in the generation of grace, or the covenant of grace. So we need to understand how God works in the old covenant and in the new covenant so that we will be able to deal with Him or to, to uh, avail the things that he has prepared even before the foundations of the world. Because the Lord wanted to bless us. The Lord wanted us to maximize the blessings that Jesus has already finished 2,000 years ago. He said in his word that all the things that he has done will not be put to, 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 uh, in vain. We will all, uh, what they call, benefits from it. And God wanted to, for us to maximize it, the blessing. Amen. 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 Okay. So, it's all about talking about the keys. So, we have to, we have, when we have the keys, we can open, we can uh, explore, and we can understand. Okay. Now, so I mentioned that there are two covenants, the main covenant. There's, there's a lot of covenant in the Bible because God always based his dealing with his people with covenants. And we understand that covenants are long, lifelong agreement. Covenant is not contract. When we talk of covenant, it's about exchanging lives. It's not about exchanging property. It's about exchanging so when God instituted covenant, He gave Himself. And He's also expecting the same from us, or whoever He made the covenant into. So the old covenant, there are two, I'll be just focusing on the two covenants. We have here the two covenants, the old and the new, right? Old Covenant, if you see your Bible, if you will read your Bible, it is divided into a uh, testament. One is the old, and the other one is the new covenant. So what, why is there a need? Why is there a need for a new covenant when we already have the old covenant, isn't it? Why do we have to make a new one when there's already existing? So, God has a better plan. Because the Old Covenant, when we say the Old Covenant is talking about the Old Testament, and when we say the New Covenant, it is talking about the second one, of course. Can you go to the Okay, so New is talking about the second, or it's called better. So when it is better, that means Whatever they have received in the old covenant, the new covenant is better than the old covenant. Hello? Amen. Right, you're still listening, right? Okay. So, when you talk about the new covenant, it's pertaining to the better covenant, or uh, the Bible calls it in Hebrews 8 6, we call it the better covenant. But now he has obtained a more excellent. So this new covenant is not just better, but more excellent. Amen. More excellent ministry in as much as he is also mediator. 
of this covenant, Jesus. So it is established in better promises. So by better, this is, there is greater things than the old one. Because it's better. Better promises, better things that is awaiting for all of us. So, the, the second covenant is also called everlasting. Amen. So when we are talking, when you hear it's a new covenant, it's also talking about the everlasting covenant. There will be no more covenant after this. Because this is the everlasting covenant or it's called the grace covenant. Better, everlasting, the second or the grace covenant. It's pertaining to one thing. And when we say grace, what do you mean by grace? Grace is a favor. Grace means unmerited. Grace means unearned. You did not earn it. You don't deserve it. So it is based, the new covenant is based on the grace covenant of God. The favor that was bestowed on people as a gift, as a favor. Amen. It has nothing to do with us. When, it, when it terms, in terms of working, contributing on it, it is God's doing. The grace covenant. Amen? Amen. Okay, so to all the first covenant, when you talk about the old covenant, because I said the new covenant first, the old covenant is pertaining to the including the Ten Commandments about the law. Old covenant, when you see, when you hear, we're talking about the old covenant, it is talking about the commandments of God, including the Ten Commandments and brothers and sisters, the Bible doesn't only have ten, but it is actually more than 600 plus laws. The Old Covenant is established with law and principle and commandments. Not the same. And what does the Old uh, means. Look at this. So when you talk about Okay. So the question is why are there two covenants? So let's study first the, 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 the old covenant. Why do we have the old covenant? The first covenant or talking about the the law. So again, I'll tell you all covenant is the first covenant or talking about the law of Moses. And the new covenant is what? Better, Better everlasting, everlasting grace, 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 better promises. And the second or the new covenant. So the first covenant is talking about the law of Moses. And here it includes the Ten Commandments plus the 650 plus laws which can be found in the first five books in the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, what's the first five? Leviticus, Deuteronomy, Numbers. It's five. Five means Penta. That's why it's called Penta Chu. First five books of the Bible, which is written by Moses. Yeah. Moses is the one who wrote the first five books of the Bible in the Old Covenant. And haven't you wondered how did Moses how did Moses write about the about the history of creation when he was not yet there? Abraham was way ahead of Moses. And Adam. But Moses, when he gave the account of the history of creation, he knows exactly how Adam and Eve sinned against, against God. Moses was not yet there. How can he write something that he doesn't witness? 
Now you will see that it is all about that instruction or the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He was dictated, he was inspired by the Holy Spirit to write the things that he have not seen. So, it's talking about the Ten Commandments. It, is it clear? Amen. Thank you, Safai. Okay. Amen. All right. So, when it is law, it's talking about the demand of God. God is demanding for people to do something. It's talking about the law. It's talking about the commandments. So, people has to do something. It's demand of God. What else? It is the requirement of man. So it's the, the first covenant is required. Man is required to do something. It is that there is a demand from God to fulfill the commandments. It's talking about the first covenant. And I believe God instituted the new covenant because He knows that no one, no one and nobody is able to do the law. No one is able to obey the law. As the Bible said, no one is righteous. Everyone falls short to the glory of God. Walang nakaabot. Walang perfecto. You might be good in the seven, eight, but you cannot perfect the 650. Don't forget. There's more. So if you're good with ten, but you still are you're failed in the other commandments the Bible in James 2 verse 10 says you stumble in one you break one of the commandments you break the all so even if you achieve 5 or 6 or 7 let's say 500 you still break because it's more than 500 that's why it is very difficult to obey or to follow the old covenant or the old covenant that's why needed that's why god needed to establish a new covenant so man is re-demanded to obey that's all about the law romans 3 19 says now we know that whatever the law says okay whatever the law says it says to those who are under the law. If you are still under the law, you are required to do these things. But if you claim that you are under grace, you are already set free from the law. So now, what is the purpose of the law? The purpose of the law was not for salvation. I'll repeat that. People are confused or there is misinterpretation and misunderstanding that if they abide or they, or they obey the law, God will bless them and God will give them salvation. They will be saved because of the works. But the law, the purpose of the law is not for that. It was not meant for that purpose. The law was given so that the Bible says so that every mouth may be stopped. What does it mean? So that no one can boast. No one can say, I'm better. I've made this. I've done this. Did you obey the whole commandments? Then shut up. You cannot boast that you are better or whoever you are. You have done something good. Because the law requires complete obedience perfection of the law and that's why it was given not for the purpose of salvation but for the purpose of shutting them out or stopping people from boasting and all the world may become guilty the purpose of the law is to make you feel guilty how does it work? What do you mean by that? Well, some people, there are people who are self-righteous. People will say, I did not do anything wrong. I don't need that because I've done this, I've donated this, I've acquired this. 
then the law is needed for that type of person. Law, the purpose of the law is to make the people see that they are not enough. Amen. That they are still guilty even if you've done something good. You are still guilty because the standard is perfection. Amen. So, everyone is guilty when we base it on the law of God. No one is able to complete or obey the law. That's why he said the purpose of that is so that no one can boast. If you say you're better, ask them, have you performed the law? The rule commandment? Otherwise, you're guilty. So, God wanted us to see that we are all sinners. Amen. That we are all guilty. Amen. We are not good enough. Okay? So, therefore, by the deeds of the law, look at this. By the deeds of the law, no flesh, no one, not a single man, however good or rich or famous a man is, no flesh. The Bible said, no flesh will be justified. If you are basing yourself from obeying, from doing good, you can never be justified. Because no flesh is justified by the law. Because the law is not for justification. The law is like is just like a mirror. It is it is just used so that people will see how sinful they are, how guilty you are, how condemned you are. So no flesh will be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. It's, it's, it's there. It is only the purpose is for the knowledge of sin. So that you will understand sin, you will know. Because when, when there is no law, there is no violation. When there is no rules, there is no violation. So the law was given so that people will understand that I violated something. It is for the knowledge of sin. Are we still getting this? Yes. Brothers and sisters, Amen. am I too fast? Are we still friends? Amen. Amen. So quiet. But I'm sure the Lord is speaking to you. I know you're meditating. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Did you get that? The purpose of the law is for the knowledge of sin. What else? So law means, what does law mean? It's all about our total obedience. You are required to obey. And who among us here could obey everything? No. Okay, let's go to Ten Commandments. <laughs> How can you even obey something that you do not know? Okay, maybe the first one, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Number one commandment, right? From number one. With all your heart. Sino ulang ang heart mo? Who is in your heart? With all your mind. Where is it? Who are in your mind? Your thoughts. Is it God? You already violated number one commandment. You're guilty. That's the knowledge of sin. That's the purpose of this. For you to see that you are not guilty. And you cannot be saved with your own effort. That's so that you will need God. Amen. Because if you think that yourself, you're sufficient, my friend, no flesh will be justified by the law. Amen. So law means you are required total obedience is required. And in the Old Testament, if you are not able to obey, there is curses and death. Curses means you are condemned. There is penalty. Death means it's not only the expiration of the body, but death in the Bible talks about death in, in all areas of your life, major relationship, death in finances, death in the joy, death in everything. 
That's the, the price of disobeying. And we are all guilty of that. That's why God needed to give another covenant. But when he gave it, he did not violate anything. He did it according to his word. He did not break anything when he instituted the new covenant. So look at this. So no. And if not obeyed, there is curse. If not obeyed, there is death. If obey, still death and curses. Why? It was done for that purpose, for salvation. It was not for blessing. It was only the requirement of God because it was the covenant. Let me just under uh, uh, expound that later. So no means, in other words, you have to do, and you have to do, and you have to do. <laughs> do, do, do. It's your works in the Old Testament. You like Old Testament? No. No, no one can do that. Not, not even one. And there's only one who did that. It's Jesus. Yeah. So the first covenant, the Bible says it's already obsolete. Why is it obsolete? What do you mean by obsolete? What do you mean by obsolete? Face out. Face out. Mobiles now are iPhone 70 plus. Maybe yours is 3310. <laughs> you know 3310? Have you seen that one? 3310. So it's it's already obsolete. So the first covenant, the Bible is saying, first covenant is obsolete. It's still there, but it's no longer suitable now for us. Computer na mayo, don't use typewriter. It's gone. So, what do you mean by obsolete? The Bible says, in that he says, a new covenant. He has made the first obsolete. That's why he had to create or he had to establish a new covenant because the first covenant is now obsolete. Now what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish and away. He needed to establish another covenant because it's already obsolete. When we talk about it's obsolete, that means that man is no longer required to, to do the law. Aren't you happy? Amen. Or you want to go back to old covenant so that you do the law? Now, if you're happy, you have to clap your hands for Jesus. Why? Because it's not because the law was already abolished, it's not because the law is no longer required, but someone fulfilled Amen. it on our behalf. And that is Jesus did the law for us and we were the beneficiary of what he has done when he did the law. Understand that? So it's not really obsolete in a way that it was erased. It's still there. But it was already done by Jesus and the covenant was already closed because of what Jesus has done. Let me explain, explain that further. So, what are the reasons why we have to change the first covenant? Let me go back first. Why there, there is a reason, why there is a need to change the first covenant? Okay. There are only, I'll give you three reasons why we have to change the first covenant. Number one, the Bible says, Hebrew, and Hebrew 8 7. The Bible says, For if that first covenant, church, if that first covenant had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second. Amen. So the reason is, there is a fault in the first covenant. That's why he has to change the first covenant. The Bible says there was a fault on that. What do you mean by fault? If, if, if it was established by God, how come that the, there is a fault in the law? How come there is a fault?
fought in commandment in the principle of God. It's not the law. It's not the principle. Because there's one problem when the people whom God had a covenant with, the Israelites with. By the way, the first covenant is between God. Did you understand covenant again? Covenant is an agreement for a lifelong agreement, an exchange of, of everything that they have. So God wanted to have a covenant with the people in the sense of grace, but people said, we do not want that covenant, we want to obey God. That's why Moses received the testaments, the old covenant. I mean, God and the Israelites people have a covenant. And the covenant is based on God will bless them if they obey the law. That's the problem because the covenant, if you remember, covenant will only expire if the first party dies. Am I right? Amen. Covenant, you will be set free from that agreement if the one party that is, uh, you know, if, that you entered with, died, then you are set free from the covenant. Amen. But the problem is, they entered the covenant between God and the Israelite people. God is eternal. Amen. God will never die. Can Amen. never die. Amen. Cannot die. Amen. So people are obliged to obey and to fulfill the first covenant. <coughs> the only way to be out is to die. Did you get that? Amen. The only way to be set free from the covenant is for that party to die. Amen. This is the principle. The Israelite people or Jesus when he came he fulfilled the law and he died on the cross. He took all our six our sickness and sins on the cross so that we will be set free. Meaning to say we need to die in order to be set free from the first covenant. So when by faith, by believing, by faith, if you see the death of Jesus to be your death, Amen. then you are set free from the first covenant. Amen. Amen. So there is Paul. How? Look at this. I will go back to that. Number two is that the fault is the Israelite people broke the covenant. They broke the covenant. How is this? Verse uh, Jeremiah 31, verse 32. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant which they broke. The people broke the covenant. They did not fulfill, they did not obey what they have promised. That's why they have to change the old covenant. Though I was the husband of them, says the Lord. You see, it's a picture of marriage. Covenant, testament. The church and God is a picture of marriage. So they, the reason why the first one is a fault, and number two, because they broke it. Amen. Number three, the number three reason for the law, it says there, for the law having a shadow of good things to come, the law is only a shadow. When you say shadow, it's not the real thing. Amen. Do you shadow? Can you keep the shadow? You cannot touch the shadow. It's only a shadow. The, the law, having a shadow of the good things to come, it's only a picture of what's going to take place in the future. That's what it's saying. Amen. The law is just a shadow of the good things to come. Amen. Because someone else is coming, a good promise based on his promises. And that's talking about Jesus. Amen. The real thing, the fulfillment of the covenant is Jesus Christ. Look at this. So, the good things and not the very image of the things can never with the same 
sacrifices which they offered continually year by year make those who approach perfect. Let me explain that again. 15 minutes. The law, if you are going to abide by the law, it says it can never make a person perfect. The sin will always be there. Amen. Because in the Old Testament, how do they atone sin? Meaning, how are people forgiven? Every time that people committed sin, they need to offer a blood sacrifice. They need to offer a blood sacrifice so that their sin will be forgiven. That's what he's saying. But this type of atonement cannot perfect them. Because it is only valid for a year. Year by year, they have to offer again so that they will be cleansed for another year. Every year, they have to offer blood. That's why he said, that the law is only a shadow of good things to come because there will be someone who will come. Listen to this now. There will be someone who will come, who will offer his blood, and it will perfect those who believe. Amen. Do you understand that? Amen. The Bible says, the burnt offerings, the sacrifices of animals, which is the atonement, or the way of forgiveness those days in the old covenant can never make the people perfect. After one year, you're again sinner. Or the cleansing is done. You need to offer again. It will be ritual and continual. And the problem is the high priest, those times are dying. The mediators are dying. So the Bible is saying, because there is a good thing to come, someone came, and that is Jesus. He already came, and he said, the law, so, sorry, the number three reason, I'm jumping. Number three reason, the law can never make you perfect. Amen. No matter how you obey and obey the law, it can never give you perfection. You can never be justified with God. Because with God, for you to be forgiven, you have to be perfect. Amen. I will say that again. Church, if you want to go, you may, I mean, if you want to be justified, what do you mean by justified? You are forgiven, removed, the sins are removed, forgotten, justified. If you want to be justified in the presence of God, you cannot use the law. Amen. Because it can never perfect you. Amen. It can never make you perfect. Amen. So we need someone who is perfect to substitute on our behalf. Amen. So, when Jesus came, the Bible says, He is the only one who made us perfect. Why? Jesus' sacrifice perfected us forever. This is the proof. Hebrew. What's the verse for that? Isa? Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10 verses 12 to 14 explained it. If the law cannot perfect people, we will all, if we will all based on the uh, justification from the law, we will all go to hell. Because the law can never perfect us. But God requires perfection. In order to be perfect, not in our physical actuations, perfect in the sight of God, we need only faith in the words of Jesus. Amen. Am I still? Amen. Amen. Yeah? Thank you. But this man, he would then look this now. But this man talking who? About Jesus. Jesus. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice, how many sacrifices? One. One time, because those times they offered the blood of bull, they offered the blood of sheep, cow, pigeon, and all these types of animals in order 
himself as a lamb, Amen. as an offering. That's why he is called the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Amen. He is the perfect offering Amen. that could perfect the believers forever. Sacrifice for sins forever. Since sins forever, it will no longer be remembered. Amen. He sat down at the right hand of God, for by one offering he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. Amen. And you can only be sanctified, you can belong to those who will to those uh, being sanctified. That means whoever will acknowledge Jesus to be their Savior, you are partaker of the new covenant of forgiveness. So it's only Jesus who could perfect us, make us perfect in the sight of God. Because we all violated, we all committed sin. And we broke the law of God. And the only way of forgiveness is not by doing good. Because that is not acceptable to the Father. The Father requires a perfect sacrifice. And that is Jesus Christ our Lord. He offered himself. That's why he died on the cross. His death was the payment for the forgiveness of all mankind. Whenever you acknowledge Jesus, that's why when you, when you ask people, who is Jesus to you? Well, Jesus is Savior, is my Savior. Why would he be called Savior if you're not in danger? Why would he be called Savior if, there's, if, if, if it's not for something? He is the propitiation. He is the provision of God. He said, Jesus, listen to this. He sent Jesus on earth to pay for the sins that we can never pay by our own effort. God, because of His mercy, loved us. He is even the one who supplied the provision of forgiveness. Jesus came and became man because the one who's going to save the court is here on earth. He is going to save mankind. He is already with God in the beginning. He is God. Amen. He was the son of God, the Bible declares. Amen. The Bible says, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. It's God. Talking about this Word, who is this Word? And the Word became flesh. And He dwelt among us. And He is so that we will all be justified. We will all be forgiven. We will all have a new life, a new thing, a newness of life. And that is in Christ Jesus. That's why everything that we do, we always say in Christ, in Jesus Christ, meaning to say acknowledging what He has done. Even in our prayers, we say in the name of Jesus because we are acknowledging the finished work of Jesus on the cross. Everything on the cross, everything was provided for all of us who are the partakers of the new covenant of grace. That's why it's called grace. You don't deserve it. You did not earn it. You did not do anything. It's grace. It's all about what Jesus has done. And if we will, you know what, what are we going to do? What is our role? We will only believe for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, whoever believed in Him will have everlasting life and will not perish. Amen. Did you understand now? All we have to do is believe Jesus, acknowledge Him that He is our Savior, and we will be 
partaker of that justification of that cross. Our sins will be forgiven and this death becomes our death so that we will be set free from the old covenant and we enter now with a newness of life in the second covenant which is the covenant of grace. Can you please pray for your sickmate? Uh, for re re Revelation. Revelation, come alive. Wisdom, come alive. Understanding, come alive. In Jesus' name. So, as we continue, I need more time. Jesus' sacrifice perfected us forever. So, His one sacrifice on the cross gave gave us access, gave us perfection, gave us salvation, gave us justification. So the second covenant, the second covenant, the second covenant is all about grace. Amen. The new covenant or the second covenant is all about grace of God has nothing to do with your goodness, with your effort, with your whatever. It's all about grace, unearned, unmerited, undeserved favor of God so that no one will boast. Amen. What else? Second covenant is God's provision. It's God who supplied the forgiveness. It's God who supplied the, the justification, the sacrifice. What else? Second covenant is telling you you have nothing to do with it. You did not participate in it. You did not contribute even a single effort. Because what? Because it's the gift of God and Amen. not your work. Amen. So that's all about grace. The grace of God is talking about the second covenant pertaining to what God has done on behalf of man through Jesus Christ. So that man will be forgiven. So that means, brothers and sisters, it's not all about religion. We're not talking of religion here. We're talking about our salvation. Amen. We are talking about here of our violation with God and how can we be justified. And the good news is, no matter what we have done, no matter what we have committed in the past, there is a way of salvation through Jesus Christ. By acknowledging him that he is our savior and he is the one who paid he is the love of God who paid for our sins so the new covenant is not based on work because it's based on faith new covenant or the grace of God is not about work but because of faith believing, faith even if you don't see it you believe it, that's faith so second covenant is about done. It's already done by Jesus. All you have to do, what? It's done already. You, have, you don't do anything. Anymore. It's about done. It's a done deal with God and man through Jesus alone. That's why we cannot claim any religion because they're not the one who died. They're not the one acceptable to the Father because the is only Jesus Christ. Amen. And religion can never say you. Religion is good works. Religion is doing something. It's about law. But Christianity is about what God has given us. What God has done for us. Amen. That's the difference between Christianity and religion. Religion is your effort. It's your good deeds. You are the one uh, do what they call outreach, charity works, orphan, taking care of orphans, of widows. That's religion. But when you talk about, but that religion cannot save you. Because the only way of salvation is by acknowledging Jesus to be your Savior. Because you are not qualified to be forgiven with your effort, with your own effort. Tama pa ba ang ko? Malakas po ba ang wife? Did you understand that? Understand that? Amen. 
Love means do, do, do. You do it. But wait, new covenant is grace. It's done, done, done. done. That's why when we pray, when we deal with God, it's always in the name of Jesus. Why? Because he's the one. You remember that James, John 14 says, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Okay. Look at the water first. Everybody, uh, sorry. Thank you. Look at me now. John 46 says, Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the light. No one can come to the Father except through me. And that's why in everything that we need, now it's already done, it was already provided. It's already provided. But all we have to do is believe it and claim it in the name of Jesus. The problem is people keep on rejecting Jesus. They are rejecting their salvation. They are rejecting the provision and the gift of God. God loves all men. He says in Timothy, it is my desire that all men will be saved. But the salvation is provided by God through Jesus alone. No other way. The only way. I am the. No one. Not one of the. I am the. There is only one way. It's Jesus Christ. It's not by other religion. No man. No religion. Jesus alone saves. Because he is the only one who sacrificed who died on the cross. He's the one who paid. His blood paid. How can you charge it to any other religious leader? They did not die. Among the religion, who is the leader that died and came back to life? Tell me. Whoever religious leaders who died, they did not come back to life. But Jesus, after three days, he raised back to life. And now he said, seated on the right hand of God after he offered himself. Hallelujah. So, when we are praying, that's why when we pray now, brothers and sisters, we would like you to understand clearly, deeply, that when you pray now, you don't pray for blessing. You don't beg God for you to be healed. You don't beg God for you to be blessed. The provision was already released through Jesus. The grace is through Jesus. Amen. Basic grace that we're studying here, when we talk about salvation, the Greek word for that is so so. So so means not only salvation when you die, but so so, so means salvation is a package deal. It includes salvation, protection, healing, prosperity.
because he said he already healed by my stripes. How do you interpret that? It's already done. So what you do is in your prayer, you declare what he has done. Amen. You appropriate his finished work on the cross. So you say, I release healing because I claim healing because Jesus already paid my healing on the cross. <laughs> because if I still have to suffer for that, it's a double jeopardy. He already paid for that. We are the beneficiary of all the sufferings on the cross. He did not just die for salvation of that next life. He died for us to benefit here on earth now. Amen. Whatever we need is already provided in the cross. Amen. Amen. Church, are you Amen. getting this? Yes. For those who believe, Amen. for those who believe, the problem is, do you believe? Amen. Because when you don't believe, it will not manifest. Because God said, without faith, you cannot please God. Amen. Jesus is the provision of God for everything that we need, even now that we are still here on earth. We don't need healing in heaven. Uh -huh. Why would you need healing in heaven? You need healing now. We need prosperity. It's done, done, done. All you have to do is believe in the name of Jesus and send it in the name of Jesus. So, how, whatever you need, whatever things that is lacking in your life, speak and declare and claim through the name of Jesus. Malang sa lang, parang nagpaus po, kanyang pagkataasan ng pati. Sira, ang po Jesus po. Alright, but you, it's uh, still here, no? Yes. So, grace is favor of God. The second covenant, we are now in the covenant of grace. Everything is provided through Jesus Christ. But, this is the situation. You can only benefit from all this provision if you believe Jesus or you receive Him as your Savior. If you acknowledge Him to be your Savior, then you are recipient of that grace. Hallelujah. Are you happy? Yes! Yeah. Really? Yeah. Everything with God is by faith. Without faith, you cannot please God. Amen. If there's unbelief, cut it out right now. We check it right now. Amen. Cast it out. Amen. Because with God, you can only avail by believing Jesus. Amen. Relationship, you declare it. Lord, I declare in the name of Jesus, relationship will be stored, restored in my family. Amen. Amen. Sickness, I cast you out because the Bible says, the finished work of Jesus gave us authority and power. We can proclaim, we can cast out. I, I will not follow my slides anymore. Can you please? Uh, Mark 16. In Mark 16, verse 17, the Bible says, for those who believe, for those who believe only. Because if you are not a believer of Jesus Christ, you cannot take this, you cannot avail this authority. Mark, Mark 16, the last chapter, I remember what story the professor said, okay, your assignment for today is to read Mark chapter 17. The next meeting, the professor said, who among you read Mark 17? Everyone raised their hand. The professor said, all of you are liars. Because Mark is only until chapter 16. There is no 17. All right. In the last verses of the... You got that, Isa? Okay. Do you have your Bible? Amen. 
Open your Bible and 17, Mark 16, 17. What does it say? It says there, in my Bible, check your Bible, it's the same. Mark 16, verse 17. And these signs will follow those who believe. So if you're not a believer, don't try this. This is the sign for those who believe. In my name, says there, in, this is the saying, in my name, they will cast out demons. Amen. Is it because of our good works? No, it's in the name of Jesus. The power is in the name of Jesus, it's not in your name. Because in your name, demons will come. <laughs> But in the name of Jesus, it says here, in my name, they will cast out demons. For those who believe, for only those who believe, they will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. Serpents are still demonic influences, curses, whatever, sickness. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. This is the inheritance of the believers. These are only one of the benefits of the cross. In the name of Jesus, you can cast out demons. This, this is the grace of God. Because you have been forgiven, because you have received Jesus as your Savior, you have the benefit of the cross. You have the authority, you receive the authority and the power. Did you understand that, church? Amen. Amen. What God is trying to make us understand today, I cannot finish it because it's a long, maybe I could do the second part. What God wanted us to understand is that our confidence is not in ourselves, Amen. but in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because everything that we need has been provided by Jesus. For those who believe, all things are possible. Be, the Bible says, be it done to you according, according to your faith. faith. Amen. So if you do not believe, nothing can be done. Mark 11, the last verse. I'm going to close with this verse. Mark 11, 23 to 24. From 22 to 23 to 24. Mark 11. The same book. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. Verse 22. Have faith in God. For assuredly, I'm reading verse 23 now. For assuredly, Jesus said, I say to you, I say to you, whoever who believe, I say to you, I say to you, whoever, whoever says to this mountain, if this is the mountain, the Bible says, whoever says to this mountain, it doesn't say, whoever says to God to remove that mountain, you are the one who's going to speak to the mountain. Whoever says to the mountain, be cast out into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. That's the power of the name of Jesus. We are now, we have now received authority and power through the name of Jesus. Our can cast out, can, can transform, can create. Not in the sense of creating the, you know, things can be created by our declaration. The Bible says, whoever set this mountain, you are the one, because every, everything has a name. You have the power, you can have the power to speak to anything and it will take. Whatever you ask, it will be done if you do not doubt. Verse 23. 24 says, Therefore I say to you, 24, 
Mark 11. Whatever things you ask, when you pray, whatever things you ask, when you pray, during the time that you are praying, when you pray, believe that you have received them. Amen. Did you understand that? When you pray, believe that you have received it, even if it's not yet in the physical. Because it's faith. Advance. That's why when you pray, do not say negative things. You always say, I believe it, I receive it. Because that's what the Bible is saying. Let, ha, let us believe the Bible as if it's true. Because it's really true. Amen. Okay. So, therefore, I say to you, when you pray, believe that you have received them and you will have them. Yes. That's the promise of the word of God. Yes. The problem is after speaking, you doubt. Will I really receive it? <laughs> that, that the cancels the manifestation. So the principle of God is saying, whoever speaks this mountain be cast out and be removed, it will obey. Whatever you ask in the name of Jesus, whatever things you believe that you have received, and even if you don't have it in your hand, because God, the character of God, He said, oh, What is that in Romans? The God who gives life to the dead calls those things which do not exist. in my name, 
I will do. Whatever you ask, when you when you pray, believe that you will receive them, that you have received them, and you will have them in the physical. First is the ritual. First is declaration. Next is physical manifestation. That's what God has done in the history of creation. He said, let there be light. And there was light. So spiritual first and then physical. Amen. This is the inheritance of the believers Amen. of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Do we believe God? Amen. Amen. Yes, because He is true and His word and God is one. So today, as all said, let us imagine. Let us use our imagination because God has done so much for us and we will not avail it. Saya, you come to waste if you will not believe it. Why don't you try? You're not paying anything anyway. <laughs> now let us try to imagine the Word of God. The Word of God says earlier, if you say to this mountain, if you prophesy to this dry bones, it will come back to life. Amen. This mountain could represent sickness, could represent broken relationships, broken families, Joy, peace, whatever relationship. Now use your tongue to prophesy and confess whatever you need in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's practice. If you want to close your eyes and imagine, just close your eyes, church. Close your eyes and imagine the things that you need in this life. What are the things that you need, you want? Because God said, Jesus died for it. You can claim it because he died for it. Jesus was already the one who suffered. He took our shame. He bore our punishment. He took our judgment. On our behalf, he is the one who suffered for all of us. This is the benefit of the believer. This is the, this is the, the things we are now Enjoy the benefits of the cross. Imagine. Imagine the things that you need, that the things that you want to happen in your life. Even if it's not yet happening, you can call forth for those things. You can call forth for those things that you want in your life, the things that is according to the will of God. Let's open your mouth and declare it. Restoration of families. Come alive. Come on, church. Start declaring because your word has power. The Bible says death and life is in the power of the tongue. And that is the inheritance of the believer. You are given this authority and power. You speak. You prophesy. You confess the things that you need. Believe in the name of Jesus. Believe in the word of God. And it will come to pass. Hallelujah. Come on, church. What do you limit that? Don't limit God. Don't limit God. God in God, nothing is impossible. Amen. Nothing is impossible. With with problems of finances, speak for money to come. If you have problem with, with resources, speak doors to be open for resources, for finances, for money, for anything, for business, for health. Come for help. Come for fitness. Come for everything that you need in this life because God has provided everything through Jesus. Because when these things, when we receive these things, we are giving glory to Jesus. Jesus said, my works on the cross will not be put in vain because I will see my people benefit from it. Let's not waste it because Jesus paid for it. He paid for it. Let's claim 